Welcome to AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. Today I'm speaking with Dave Rakamura, VP of DevOps for Control Group. Welcome. Oh, hi Jeff. Thank you very much. So let's talk a little bit about what Control Group is and what you guys do. Okay. Uh, Control Group's uh, an 11-year-old uh, technology consulting company in New York City. Um, sort of our mission is to transform uh, businesses, products, and spaces with technology. Okay, so when you first heard about the cloud, how did that align with the kinds of things you guys were thinking of doing or already doing? I mean, it's been really interesting. I mean, Control Group hasn't been working with cloud computing. Well, maybe, I guess for the last four years, we've been working with cloud computing. Um, you know, and it really, when that came about into our practice, it really transformed the way that we were delivering some software projects or infrastructure projects for our clients. Um, and we found it really transformed our own practice. Um, and from that, we've been able to produce um, products, projects a lot faster and help our clients in much you know, more different ways. Um, and also, we've been using that same sort of thing to uh, transform other companies' practices. Some of our clients are asking for help with you know, development operations practices or how to integrate the cloud into their workflow, things like that. So you first saw AWS, and something about it appealed to you a oh, whole yeah. lot. Which, what was it? Well, I mean, I think that just like everybody else, the first thing is just the thought of the cost, you know, 10 cents an hour for a server or something like that. And we started to use that for more and more things, development systems, production systems, stuff like that. But over time, we recognized, you know, the fact that we're interfacing with an API that we can program against. We can build infrastructure dynamically and, on, and change it, you know, at any time. Really change the way we were able to develop software, change the way we were able to you know, take on projects that we would not be able to do otherwise. It was, it's revolutionary for us. Certainly. Now, you've got this cool title of VP of DevOps. Yes, so how does that actually factor into what you guys do? Yeah, well, I think what we recognized at our own company was that we really needed to have um, a group dedicated to understanding, um, you know, where this difference between development and operations came in and how we can make sure that handoff from, from one team to the other goes really well. And that's where we came about. And, um, you know, my, my group works a lot with cloud computing. We work a lot with Amazon Web Services. We interface with the developers and help them understand the architectures they're building. We give them the tools to provision and, and manipulate and work with cloud computing and other kinds of resources. And then we also work with our support teams to sort of you know, tie that together. Okay. So what's a typical customer like for you? And any, any ones you can quote for us, tell us a bit about what they do? Sure. I mean, I think another great, interesting uh, um, project is for OTG management. We just we completed this project for them earlier this year, which is to deploy these um, iPads in the airport, which allow customers to order uh, or order food or services um, at the gate area and have it delivered right to you before you get on the plane, which is, which is really convenient if you fly a lot. Um, you know, but um, what's, what's really neat about that project that I don't think a lot of people know about is that the, the development cycle from, from concept to production launch was only eight months for us. Um, and we were able to do that with them by developing it all on, you know, all the back end and stuff on Amazon. So on day one, our developers were building the, were building the infrastructure that would be the template for what production was. And cutting from development to production was, you know, just like that. We deployed it 100 times a day, so there was no surprises or, you know, questions about it. So you, you talked a little bit about templates. Are you actually referring to things like, um, like CloudFormation style templates? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that it's been interesting to see sort of our, our, our evolution and understand how that evolution happens inside of um, the companies that, that we work for and what the products that they're making. We use CloudFormation heavily now, and we use um, uh, uh, configuration management languages like Puppet, for example, to configure other things. And our goal is to describe the entire infrastructure of the application and the application together as code that gets versioned into one uh, source code repository. Sure. And what's really exciting about that, especially in, um, in, in places where security or compliance is really important, is that we can audit an infrastructure at any time and say, yes, this is exactly the way we developed. This infrastructure is built for this application and vice versa, and we know that it's performing. So you can optimal. compare what's running versus what's in the template and actually just go through item yeah. by item and say it, it's all there and that's all that's there. Totally. And we're working, with tool, we're working on tools to sort of make that a lot more you know, obvious and evident for compliance reasons or auditability reasons. I mean, it's sort of unbelievable to think about when I was a systems administrator five or six years ago. You know, if someone asked me, how do I know my server's up to date or built correctly, I would just say, well, it's in the run book or it's in my head and I guess it's true, but now we can really look at the source code and say, yes, this is up to date and this is right because we did it. Awesome. I really enjoyed speaking with you, so thanks so much for coming by. Great. Thanks very much, Jeff. This has been the AWS Report and I'm Jeff Barr.